Hello and welcome to the Arise interview. 60 minutes of big questions about the big stories from the news and beyond with fresh insights and critical analysis. I am Christian Nogodo. Thanks for joining us and we're live in the nation's capital, Abuja. Coming up in the next hour. It is 11 years now since the death of the leader of the Boko Haram sect, Mohamed Yusuf, who was allegedly killed on July 31st, 2009 by the police in Maiduguri, the Boronu state capital. The killing of Yusuf has led to the escalation of the Boko Haram crisis that has today engulfed the entire northeast region, where several thousands of people have been killed and millions of others either displaced from their homes or living in internally displaced camps. Eleven years after, the nation is still at the throes of war, with not only, uh, not only with Boko Haram terrorists, but with members of the Islamic State of West Africa province, ISWAP, as well as unending banditry and kidnappings. Today, we'll speak to a notable and experienced parliamentarian, a former leader of the Senate and Chairman Senate Committee on Army, who is a vocal voice in the Ninth National Assembly about the wanton killings in the country caused by bandits and Boko Haram insurgents and the controversy arising from the alleged misappropriation of 100 billion naira in the Northeast Development Commission that was established to rehabilitate and resettle victims of insurgency. We'll interrogate all these issues with distinguished Senator Mohammed Ali Undume, coming up in a moment. First, let's begin with the issue of insecurity in the country. It has been suggested that corruption within the military is prolonging the people's suffering in northeast Nigeria. Recall that Boko Haram state, uh, sorry, recall that Boronu state's governor, Babagana Zulum's convoy, was attacked by suspected gunmen while on a trip to internally displaced persons camp in the state, that's at Baga, the governor suggested soldiers were behind it and once again used the word sabotage. But the army blamed Boko Haram for the attack. The governor said efforts to defeat the jihadist group Boko Haram have been undermined by elements of the security apparatus. So, what's the veracity of the statement? Let's now turn to the man who is in the position to say it as it is. I've now been joined by Senator Mohammed Ali Undume. He is the chairman, Senate Committee on Army, and he comes from Goza Town of Boronu State. Very warm welcome, distinguished Senator Mohammed Ali Undume, to the Arise interview. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us. Um, you've just returned from your home state of Boronu State, the epicenter of the Boko Haram and other insurgency activities. You want to tell us the security situation on ground from what you saw in Boronu State? Well, I must tell you that the, secu the security situation in Borno is still very bad. But, as I said, we are still hopeful. I have been saying several times that this war against the insurgents is winnable. All we need to do is to really sit up and address this issue squarely, as other countries like Chad, who are not as big, who are not as resourceful as Nigeria did. Uh, remember last time, when the banditry, especially ISWAP in the Lake Chad fringes, were tormenting people, the president of uh, uh, Chad, that is Idris Deby, took his troop and went there for himself. It took them eight to ten days to clear uh, that the, 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 Chad, the Chadian part of the Lake Chad. And if Chad can do it with a joint military task force, with a military that are very resilient, if there is real, real commitment to get this thing cleared within reasonable time, it can be done. But as the governor said, we are suspecting there is a sabotage within the system that frustrates and hinders success. And in fact, our fear now 
is that there is an economic war that is coming after the unconventional war that is being fought around there. So people are benefiting from the extension of uh, the insurgency. And that will make it very difficult, or is making it even difficult, to bring this um, matter to an end. There are three basic areas, black spots. I have said it several times that the Boko Haram now have been reduced to. One is the Lake Chad, and the deadly one is the Lake Chad uh, fringes, where ISWAP is uh, based. And then the other one is in Sambisa, where it is suspected that that is the base of the leader of Boko Haram, Shekau. And then the Mandara Mountains in my local government, where some of the remnants of the insurgents are based. And from there, they normally launch guerrilla uh, attacks. And uh, basically, uh, it, it, the, it, the, the war continues, as the governor said, because there is sabotage within the system. I agree with him completely. Okay, you agree. And uh, that shooting of, uh, or the attack on the convoy of uh, the governor of Borno sp uh, State has sparked a national debate on the true state of military operations in the Northeast, particularly um, uh, after earlier claims that the insurgents had been literally defeated or technically defeated. And the Nigerian governors are even concerned that meeting uh, they've asked for a meeting with uh, the president over the state of insecurity, uh, even with the chiefs of uh, the uh, armed forces, I mean the military chiefs. And are you uh, still, you know, uh, aghast by the situation that the military is not defeating uh, the insurgents? Well, uh, as you rightly said, I just came back from my degree today. And I was in Goza for the Sala. And uh, I met the governor, and we had a lengthy discussion on what happened when he was in, attacked in Baga. And um, the governors of uh, KB, who is the chairman of the Progressive Governors Forum, and his counterpart from Jigawa, paid our governor the soli uh, solidarity visit. And I was there to receive them. And after the formalities of the sympathy visit, and um, we sat down and uh, analyzed the situation critically, made suggestions to them, and they promised that, uh, as you have rightly said, to get across to Mr. President uh, so that uh, uh, various actions will be taken to bring this to an end because it is escalating and it is not only escalating, but it is also spreading. Because you know that the so-called Boko Haram are not engaged in religious war. These are a bunch of criminals that are perpetuating criminality. And we are suspecting that once there is economic benefits in it, as it looks, then it spreads. And that is what is happening in the Northwest, as you can see, and the part of North Central. So literally, it means that the north is completely unsafe. You have banditry in the northwest, you have the insurgents in the northeast, and you have the headsmen and cattle rustlers in the north central. It is high time that the government should sit down and be serious about this issue, which I repeatedly say is doable, is winnable, because there are three uh, uh, con contingent of the armed forces or people that can address this matter. One is the Nigerian armed forces consisting of the Navy, the Army, and the Air Force. And we have a lot of volunteers because he who wears the shoes feels the pain or the pitch. We have a lot of volunteers of hunters, vigilantes, civilian JTF that contributed in driving or chasing uh, the insurgents out of Borno. You remember, they were occupying literally about 22 local governments. So there is improvement, and that is what we have been saying, that there is improvement. But when it is not over until it is completely over. Uh, right now, 
uh, the Nigerian Armed Forces are concentrating more on defense instead of attack. They are supposed to go after these people to where they are, clear them, and then get those that surrender, and then, you know, uh, 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 bring this issue to an end. It is the same thing in the Northwest. As you can see, the bandits are not operating with helicopters or even vehicles. They are operating on motorcycles in a desert or Saharan area. And yet, I can't understand where these issues, uh, I mean, this matter cannot be squarely addressed. These people are not well trained. These people are not well equipped. They don't have the number that the armed forces have on ground. I mean, they don't have the equipment that the uh, Nigerian Armed Forces, Air Force, or Navy have. And uh, so it, you begin to wonder where this, when this problem continues to linger, then you begin to suspect definitely that there must be something wrong somewhere. That's why this uh, problem continues to fester. Yes, uh, distinguished senator. Very well said there. But some uh, Nigerians are still worried that why is insecurity so uh, persistent, you know, in the Northeast, despite the top political and military uh, chiefs in President Muhammadu Buhari's government coming from that region? Why? Well, I cannot answer that because I'm not uh, one of them. But all I know is that Mr. President, up in issue, and is still, I believe, knowing him well, uh, that he is so committed to ending this uh, insurgency, banditry, and crim other criminalities that is happening in the country. Remember when we went around campaigning, we campaigned that our program basically will center on security, fight against corruption, and then uh, 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 infrastructure. Those are the basic things that we are. And on coming, uh, the president uh, directed the commander, uh, the chief of army staff and top other uh, armed forces uh, leadership to relocate to Borno. Twice that has been done. Initially, the chief of staff went there, uh, and he was there for some time. And the last two months or so, he went there and spent over 60 days yet. The problem has it continued to, 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 to linger. And uh, I think there is a need to sit down and look at the challenges they are facing drastically. I am oversighting the Nigerian Armed Forces. I know what is on ground. If you go and see the environment, the equipment that the uh, Nigerian Armed Forces are operating with, you know that that one is grossly inadequate to address this issue. You can't believe it because of lack of ammunition. In a war, a Nigerian armed forces in, in those areas, are, you know, ammunitions are even rationed to them. You know, they don't have, uh, like, basically, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 ARP or what they call it, uh, Jeez, uh, and the rest. You know, armored vehicles okay. enough. Uh, all take. right, distinguished. Um, very sorry to cut in here. We want to take some messages. When we return, you'll be speaking along uh, the lines of insecurity in the Northeast, the IDP camps, and the rehabilitation and reintegration program of the government. Stay with us after the break. You're welcome back to the Arise interview with me, Christian Ogodo, and I still have with me. Distinguished Senator Mohamed Ali Ndume, former leader of the Senate and currently is the chairman of the uh, Committee on the Army. Uh, Senator Ndume, before we went on break, you were talking on the line of the inadequacies being faced by officers and men of the Nigerian Army in the war against uh, terrorism and the Boko Haram insurgents. You want to conclude your thoughts here? Well, as I was saying, that you, are, you can't ask from the person that doesn't have it. The Nigerian army, I uh, have been saying it several times, they are not well equipped, they are not well funded, and they don't have uh, what it takes. That is the number. They don't even have the number. 
in a war like this, uh, the Nigerian army in belie believes normally in every war, believes in dominating the war area. You deploy enough number of troops to all angles, and that was what the Chadians did. In fact, uh, my, my investigation showed that they just deployed a fraction of their, tru uh, their equipment. They had tankers, they had vehicles, they have assorted uh, uh, um, uh, uh, vehicles that carry this RPG or what they call it, and numbering over 250, as I said. They had various command, and they were well motivated. Uh, you could see the president was there with them, the top military um, officers in the, uh, from Chad were with them, and uh, they had a mission to clear a certain place, and they cleared it, and they said, look, we have cleared them, and they are now uh, 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 in so-so area. They, uh, they, they managed to uh, 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 capture so many of them, uh, and even their equipment and uh, arms. And uh, I was thinking that the Nigerian side would take it from there and then block their own side, you know, chase them to where they are, and get it done. But they don't have the equipment, enough equipment. They don't have enough ammunition. They are not well funded. I said it, uh, their budget was not released, especially the capital side was not released to them until half of the, uh, I mean, in the middle of the year. And uh, you are in a war situation, for God's sake, uh, Christian. How can you, for example, in the budget of 10 trillion, budget less than 1%, of the, uh, to, 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 to the Nigerian armed forces as their capital. That is the, um, the money they will use to buy armored tanks, to buy ammunition, to buy uh, certain things. And uh, I, I, I still see that uh, actually they must, the Nigerian government must sit up and realize that this is a cancerous problem that can spread and it has already started spreading because I believe there are elements of Boko Haram in, uh, in those uh, bandits that are carrying out uh, and, and are traumatizing uh, the people of the Northwest. And if you run a check also, you will find out that <clears throat> those that are engaged in cattle rustling, banditry, and also uh, the so-called farmers' heartsmen uh, in, in, in North Central, they have elements of such criminals amongst them. So Nigerian government really need to know that uh, we are in a period of war. It's like when your house is on fire, you don't measure or quantify the water that you uh, use to put off the fire. You use all sorts of liquids that can put off the fire to put off the fire first. Then you start accounting or you know, taking stock of what you have lost. But this is not the case in the Nigerian situation. I find that very unfortunate. And as I said, that this matter can be addressed is doable. It's not uh, you know, uh, beyond our military uh, armed forces. In fact, I strongly believe even the hunters and the volunteers, the civilian JTF, uh, are capable of challenging uh, uh, these people. Because even now, uh, they normally go with the military and assist them in, uh, during, in, in, in carrying out uh, their operations. Uh, the Nigerian police, in Borno, for example, recently the Nigerian police acquired, I think, about 100 uh, armed, uh, uh, armored vehicles. And those who are, we have seen is very effective. In fact, the governor was saved by one of them. One, one of them, uh, the, 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 the crack uh, police had one armored tank uh, that normally go with the, the governor. When the attack was carried out, it was that tank, uh, I mean, armored tank, that the police used to rescue uh, or save the governor uh, from, from harm, uh, from the attack by the Boko Haram. And uh, as he s rightly said, that you begin to wonder where in Baga there are so many, I think over 1,000 troops are there in Baga. Yet, the Boko Haram are operating. They are in charge of the economy in that axis. And that is where they are more deadly because they, get, they, they, they are the ones that engage in 
a business of uh, a very, very, uh, very lucrative business of uh, fishing and uh, cattle uh, rearing around uh, that area. The monies they make through their illegal uh, connections is what they use to buy arms. You, you know that there is, you know, proliferation of arms around that is coming down from Libya, Mali, and uh, other countries uh, there. But uh, as I said, and I continue to say that this issue uh, can be addressed. The, uh, the war against the insurgents, banditry, and other criminalities is winnable, but we have to be serious. The level of commitment is not there. The level of serious, and that is why the troops are even frustrated and they engage in other forms of uh, small criminalities too, uh, especially when they realize that there are a lot of economic gains that they can make from the uh, illegal activities or trading or commercial activities around uh, that area. And uh, uh, in, in terms of the financing also, uh, because their monies, allowances, besides being you know, small, it is recently that they, it was increased from 1,000 to 2,000 Naira per head, and that, it was, that normally is not even uh, paid to them timely. And so they get uh, frustrated honestly. So um, you can't blame the military completely, but because those issues have not been addressed. If I were the president, I would call in the service chiefs, ask them what they want, give them what they need to end this war, and give them timeline. Look, what do you want to end this war? Once they say it, and uh, it is, uh, you know, and the government can provide it. I believe the government can do that. Then the next question will be, when are you finishing with this uh, business of insurgency, banditry, and other forms of criminality? They must give you a date, and that date will come to pass. If they don't perform, then you can get some people to do the job. But we can't continue like this. Our people are suffering. People are dying. And these, these small uh, criminals are venturesome, resilient, and that is because they believe strongly in what they are doing and they are benefiting from it. I went and spent my salary in Goza, spent two days there under heavy guard and all that. And they, they, they were venturesome, they were, they were daring. After I left around four o'clock, they attacked the convoy of Nigerian army that are located in Goshe. Uh, but fortunately, the Nigerian army being you know, resilient were able to take them and uh, down, but we had uh, small casualties. Uh, uh, <coughs> two soldiers were wounded. And in the night I, that I left, too, I got a report that they attacked one of their, one day of their posts around Go in Goza, and uh, they wounded two soldiers that were on that post. So you can see that because they take the Nigerian armed forces for granted, that's why they always take the fight to them. I am expecting that the Nigerian army should be equipped uh, you know, encouraged, motivated to t instead take the fight to the insurgents instead of waiting for the insurgents to take them on. You can imagine a governor with a lot of convoy was moving and the, the, this Boko Haram, as they claim, were daring to have uh, attacked uh, the, the convoy of the governor. This is very unfortunate. It's indeed, and uh, what a great submission. Picture of grim and gloom there from uh, Boronu. Uh, distinguished Senator, we want to go on a short break uh, for some messages. When we return, we'll be asking uh, your views more on the insecurity situation in that state. You're still watching the Arise interview. You're welcome back to the Arise interview with me, Christian Ogodo. We're live in Nigeria's capital, Abuja. I still have distinguished Senator Mohamed Ali Undume, former Senate leader and now the chairman senate committee on the army i'd said that uh, the picture you've painted there about uh, the um, situation of uh, the officers and men of the nigerian army in combating the insecurity occasioned by the boko haram terrorists and iswap uh, uh, terrorists as well is very gloomy but no doubt that must have informed your persistent 
call that the service chiefs should go as they have nothing more to offer. And that uh, gauntlet, I would say, uh, was picked up by your colleagues in the Senate and in the House of Representatives. Are you still on that track that the security chiefs should go? Uh, no, actually that is not the, my concern. Uh, in the military hierarchy, the president is the commander-in-chief. Then you have the service chiefs. Uh, I said it before that I am not really in support of saying, oh, let these people go. But at the same time, we have to get the job done. And if we have to get the job done, the people that are in charge must be given what they need to get the job done. If you, have, if you don't give them what they need to get the job done, then it, it, it is just like beating the, wrong, the dead horse. You can't uh, blame them for the problem. You see, well, I'm working directly now, especially that I oversight the Nigerian army. I know what they have. And I know what they need. So I cannot come out to say, oh, just change these people, because uh, even if you change them and they don't have what it takes to, you know, to, 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 to execute the war, it won't bring any result. They don't have the equipment. They don't have the personnel. They are not well funded. They don't have the technical or the modern equipment that is necessary to fight such war. But if they are availed with those the number with the equipment and they are well funded then you can give them the timeline to say okay uh, you must finish this war in three months if you don't finish it in three months I'll get some other people to do it this is what I'm still suggesting that give them what they need and give them time to do it if they don't de do it at the time you have given them then you have you can ask them to go and uh, in addition to that I am, uh, I know the president. He is a retired general in the Nigerian army. He is in the best position to know, and as, have they, uh, as, as they said, when the motion I brought was amended by a colleague asking again for the president to uh, ask the, or to, to, to change the leadership of the armed forces. And he rightly said, uh, or the president rightly said that that is their own uh, prerogative. The, the, the president or the commander-in-chief is the person that is uh, responsible for that, and he knows when and uh, uh, at what time is he supposed to do that. So I still uh, believe in that because that is what the Constitution says, and I leave it like that. The president is in the best position to make that decision. And I think the persistent call requires that he should re-examine the leadership and also get the leadership to act, uh, you know, uh, put forward what they want. Give them what they want to execute the war and give them the time that they must be done with it. If they don't do it, then you can change them. But for me, now, knowing fully the condition that they are operating, to say that they should be removed. Honestly, it's not fair. Yeah, it's not fair. And uh, you have painted the conditions under which uh, uh, members of the armed forces are, uh, you know, uh, taking this war to Boko Haram. Could that be the reason why you have so many re resignations from uh, the soldiers? And uh, you recently talked about over 1,000 soldiers have been lost, you know, to uh, the war against Boko Haram and other insurgents. Don't you think that these are plausible reasons why the resignation from uh, soldiers is escalating too, Senator? Well, the truth of the matter is that our soldiers operating on ground, they are very patriotic. They must be commended for the uh, sacrifice they have been making. You can imagine some people putting their life online in order uh, to, to, to save this situation. Many of these young uh, uh, men that are uh, enlisted into the Nigerian army and deployed to the war zone that is the theater are frustrated. Frustrated in the sense that uh, you can imagine you are in a war and then uh, your opponent or uh, the Boko Haram 
have arms and ammunition that they fire anyhow, fire randomly. But the Nigerian army side, uh, the, the ammunition given to them is rationed, and they have to fire carefully because if you exhaust your arm, uh, your, your ammunition, then you are, you are just vulnerable. Uh, one, uh, one bullet can take you down. So they are so frustrated. And as I said, uh, their allowances, I understand, because I interact with them. I go there. I, I told you I went to Goza, and I take my time to interact with them. And they open up, and they tell me the, the truth. Here you are, you leave your parents or your family somewhere, and your allowances are not coming on time, and you go to war would thinking that maybe your children cannot uh, get uh, the basics that they need or meet their your basic uh, uh, needs because your allowances are not coming on time. If you go and see the camps, even the super camps that have been recently introduced and where they are posted, even the condition, this common tent, common tent that they are supposed to pro be provided with, it's not there. If you go and see the condition the Nigerian army are operating, honestly, you must give it to them. You must, you know, uh, uh, you, you, you know, you must commend them for for their commitment. So I'm not surprised that those the, those weak ones uh, get frustrated and they drop their arms and uh, and uh, leave because uh, they are being exposed. Honestly, uh, when I went to Goza, they had to provide security scan the, uh, the, 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 the road so that there will be no explosive. And they, they, they detected between uh, Pulka and Goza some explosives that were planted. But the, but, 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 but the sad thing about it is they had to do it manually. Manually, there's no uh, uh, mine detector with them that can run, uh, you know, like at this, a certain speed to detect the explosive. They have to do it manually. So when they are supposed to come and pick me up around 11 o'clock, they could not finish, uh, 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 they could not come to Meduguri to pick me up until around 1 o'clock. And that is because it took them a lot of time. A journey that is supposed to take one and a half hours took them four hours because they have to clear the road uh, so that when I come in, uh, something doesn't happen to me. I, I, I felt it that day, you know. And when we were coming in, uh, it was raining. Some of these soldiers were standing there on guard to see that I get to Goza safely. No, no even common ra uh, raincoat. They don't have it. And uh, they are deployed somewhere. I, there's a place where they were deployed. And I stopped and I said, where is your vehicle? They said, no, they don't have any vehicle yet. Did their vehicle drop them? And it will come later in the evening to pick them up. Can you, you can imagine if there is uh, uh, an attack by the, by, 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 by the insurgents that normally uh, uh, ride on motor, um, motorcycles and bicycles, if they come after them, and uh, with limited ammunition at their disposal, if these people come within, in, in large number, uh, these guys will now be wasted. So this, this situation uh, is, is, very, is very sad. And uh, what I find very unfortunate is that people keep emphasizing service chiefs, service chiefs, service chiefs. It is not the service chiefs that are on the field. It is not the service chiefs that are on ground. As I told you, this war has been going on for now six years since the taking over of this administration. The chief of army staff, as expected, was there twice. And uh, the, the, chief, the chief of uh, air staff was there severally too. But they can't be there on the ground. It is the theater commanders, the battalion commanders, the, the company commanders that are on ground. These people must be giving what they want in order to find this war. These people must be encouraged. These people must be motivated. If you see the motivation in the uh, Chadian Armed Forces, they were at the war front like a, like a game. They were playing it like a game. They were singing. They were praising. The president was cooking for them himself. You know, it is just if you compare it. When we went to Cameroon, uh, the, 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 the Cameroonian side, and the, we have Kirawa, a village called Kirawa and Asgashia that are bordering uh, Cameroon. And uh, the border between us is just a simple uh, small river. If you go to the Cameroonian side, they are living their normal life. And if you cross the river, you come to the Nigerian side, there is nobody there. In fact, when we went with our generals, we met a colonel there. The kitting, the fitting, I mean the spirit, of the soldiers, the uniform they are wearing, 
if you see our own generals, they look like rebels and, you know, to compare to Cameroon. So these things must Adding your troops what, who what, are small in number, I do yeah. uh, think they need. Look at what happened in Katsina. Um, they were, uh, the, the Nigerian Armed Forces were, uh, were, were, were ambushed. If we, they had a common drone that can uh, drone that can travel 40 kilometers, you set the drone and uh, it, it does the surveillance and comes back and gives you the data. It will, t you know, see what is gone ground. And that will, would have saved those lives, innocent lives. We lost a major, a captain, a, a lieutenant, and the troops. That was avoidable. And the cost of the, the, a drone, you know, is not up to a cost of a life. One life of a Nigerian is more than the cost of the drone. And how much does it cost? You know, these days, with the technology, the cost is always going down because the production is going up. Uh, APC. Uh, 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 this um, uh, about uh, personnel career, you know, how much does it cost? And the, the helicopters, uh, last time, as I said, we bought three, and when they were delivered, we celebrated it. A small country like Myanmar was ordering uh, how many? About 12 or 13 of them at a go. Uh, recently, Egypt acquired uh, the, the most sophisticated uh, 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 aircraft, attacked aircraft, uh, they, do they call it S-35 or so, they, they, they ordered for 20 or more of them to be delivered. And they say that is just part of the delivery. I'll go and see what the Nigerian armed forces have. So we have to really sit up. We have to provide the, our armed forces what they want or what they need in order to execute this war. But for now, uh, you go to, if you see the tankers that we are using, uh, those are the tankers that were acquired during the Shagari uh, regime. The Shagari regime to date is getting to 40 years. And you use those uh, to, 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 but the Nigerian army will not complain. They always manage, and they go to the extent of even trying to manufacture some of these things themselves. It can't work. It can't work. Even if it means you hire. For example, from pa uh, Pakistan, uh, they are, even, the, even when they are at war, you can still go to other countries to hire helicopters, Go, uh, uh, helicopters and uh, uh, gun trucks and so many things and for six months you say you negotiate and they deliver they operate they give them the area cover and our troops on ground even the number even with the small number they, they can move on we have a, a special train squad in uh, that were trained recently in Jaji but you go there in the theater they don't have what it takes they don't have the ammunition they don't have the equipment to use to fight they don't even have the mobility to go where uh, the, the 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 insurgents are uh, and uh, we will continue to to talk because we are representative of the people we'll continue to cry out until the government does something because anything you do in this country whether it's development or anything without peace there will be no progress uh, there are roads down that are built by this government in the northwest that cannot be applied because it is not safe. Uh, from Kaduna to from Abuja here to Kaduna is a problem even recently because we hear of people being kidnapped on daily basis and people resort to traveling by train. You know, and how much can that do? And if the road is not moving and you say you are fixing the road, it doesn't work. It doesn't actually work. I hope the Nigerian government and the Nigerian people also will appreciate the problem that we are facing in the Northwest and now the Northeast. You can imagine the Nigerian government are saying that we used to depend on Nigeria. Their president said it in the international gathering. It was very embarrassing. They said, he said, we used to depend on Nigeria. We used to be a problem to Nigeria. But now Nigeria is a problem to us. And he was right. Because right in Borno, we have over 120,000 internally displaced persons that, were taking, that are taken care of by a poor uh, Niger for the last six years. And now recently on the other axis, Sokoto, Zamfara, and Katsina, many over 60,000 by the United uh, uh, United. Uh, uh, United Nations Humanitarian Affairs said that there are over 60,000 Nigerians that are, uh, you know, uh, uh, internally displaced, uh, living in, uh, in, in, in Niger on the other axis. 
Uh, you can imagine that. We have over 60,000 uh, uh, internally displaced persons in Menawa in Cameroon. He, they, they. I mean, this is Nigeria. Nigeria is a great and a big country. Nigeria has the resources. Nigeria has the people. Nigeria has everything it takes to win this war. I keep on saying that it's winnable. Mr. President should now change the tactics. Because what is happening is that I don't think that Nigerians and even the leadership appreciate, really appreciate the problem that we are having. If you go now and see the people that are internally displaced in various camps, over 1.7 million of uh, people from uh, the Bay State, what we call the Bay State, that is Borun, Adama, and Yobe, are internally displaced. By the UN Office of Humanitarian Affairs, it is statistically uh, uh, known that uh, over 7.8 million people are in need of humanitarian assistance. In Borno alone, the insurgents have inflicted over $9 billion uh, destruction on the Northeast. Uh, whatever you, you, when, you, when you look at it, you won't even appreciate it until you go to Borno, visit the camps, and uh, see the condition that we are living. Uh, the journey from Meduguri to to, 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 to Goza that I went, I came back today, it usually takes us one hour or at most one and a half hours. But now if you want to go, you have to go under military escort and it takes four hours. Same indeed. Uh, a nation scandalized by the kind of uh, picture you've uh, painted of uh, the Nigerian military, its officers and men, in the war against Boko Haram. Very sad indeed. And yet, uh, distinguished senator, we'll find that uh, there is a three R being um, pursued by the government under the de-radicalization program and rehabilitation and reintegration program. How do you reconcile this? Say uh, these are repented, uh, de-radicalized uh, former terrorists and the kind of money spent on them. Senator? Well, my position, uh, Christian, is known on this and it has not changed. Uh, yes, in a war, you have prisoners of war that surrender. And in this case, the Operation Safe Corridor that they said is okay, but the timing is wrong. The timing is wrong. And the way they, are, they go about doing it is also wrong. How can you, uh, you can imagine? I am from Goza. Uh, Goza was taken over by Boko Haram in, the 19, in, 19, in 2014 and declared as their, the headquarters of their caliphate. In that Goza, when they attacked and took over Goza in 2014, everybody ran in different directions. That's why uh, people from Goza East ran to Cameroon. Those of us in Goza Central, including our Emir then, ran to Madagali. They chased them to Madagali. They ran to uh, uh, Uba. And then from Uba, they also ran to Yola finally. These people were scattered all over the country. And the sad thing about it, I'm giving you an example of Goza where I come from. We had elders, 75 of them, that gathered together and always reading the Quran, hoping that that will save them from the insurgents. Just one day, 75 of them were not only killed, but they were taken to an abattoir, a new abattoir that was built in local government. They slaughtered and killed the 75 uh, elders. None of them is less than 60 was less than 60. And in, near my house, near my father's house, there is a, 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 an Islamic school, so to say, uh, that are in this Tijaniya sect. Uh, the the Tijaniya is, is a sect in, in, in Islam. 20 of the uh, Malam student, uh, uh, Malam, uh, Malam, uh, Malam in that our area, were lined up on ground and killed 20 of them. 
And we know those people that did it, especially. Then, suddenly, the government will come about with this program, Operation Safe Corridor. Yes, you have to open a window for people that are willing to surrender, are willing to, you know, uh, be reintegrated. But you don't do that when the war is still going on. I have cited an example of the American government when it went into war in Iran and Iraq and they captured the terrorists. They took them to Guantanamo Bay. Up to now, there are still elements of, Guantan of uh, the prisoners of war in Guantanamo Bay. Some of them are even innocent. Uh, some of them were conscript. Yes, there is. But they keep them there, profile them, and then release those that they have thoroughly investigated and found to be innocent. And then those that are found to be complicit, uh, they normally charge them to the appropriate military court in there and sentence them. But in the Nigerian case, I have objected that up initial. When they did the first batch, the first batch had about 50 or more people uh, that were uh, so-called de-radicalized. When I went back, when I went home and uh, interacted with my people, they, they outrightly rejected that. Because how can you uh, accept somebody uh, uh, that killed your father or your relative or your friend or killed people in your town, just come back and say that the government do not only uh, 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 de-radicalize them, but also pamper them. As I said, we have over 100, uh, 1.7 million people in the camps. Why don't you resettle? Why don't you use the RRR in, uh, on the victims? You should resettle the victims. That is first. It should be the first priority. Resettle, reconstruct their play houses, and uh, reintegrate them back to the society. Give them small capitals that they can start their life. Here in Abuja, in Abuja here, I repeat again, in Abuja we have over 10,000 internally displaced persons scattered around uh, Niger, uh, Abuja here, and Nasarawa. These people are involved in menial farming because our people are known to engage in subsistence farming in order to, they, can't, they are not beggars. They don't want to be a burden on anybody. So they ask for permission to get a place and they resettle and they, they name them. Last time, I was in the, in the FCT minister, state, uh, state uh, 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 minister for FCT, to beg. They want simple fertilizer and uh, farm inputs to help them because they don't have it. But yet, that is not a priority. And then you start going to take in some people saying that they have surrendered. If they have surrendered, what I was expecting, that those of them that are, are active and uh, 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 fighters of Boko Haram should be used by the Nigerian army to either provide them intelligence or to fight the Boko Haram. Well, how can you just take them back and, and pamper them, give them startup to do what? And uh, I believe that some of these people are just, you know, uh, using, this, using this open corridor to take advantage of them. I said it before, I asked people in Dambua, because over 100 of them were released to Dambua, when they went there, after a few days, they disappeared. And I gave you an example that one of them, after coming back, he went and killed his own father and took his cows. Uh, up to now, we don't, the, the military could not uh, find him, but they were able to recover the cows. It's not, Senator, it's not the finally, um, let's uh, just look at, uh, you talked about the plight of the humanitarians uh, the, in the IDP camps scattered all over the country, over 1.7 million. And the NEDC, the Northeast Development Commission, is awash with allegations of corruption or uh, fraud, 100 billion. Very quickly, we, you have the closing uh, two minutes to uh, give us your thoughts here. Well, what is happening with the NEDC, and you remember, Christian, I'm the sponsor. I was in the for forefront of uh, uh, sponsoring the bill, uh, w w which the president graciously signed into law, 
and even tend them at, uh, gave them in last year a 10 billion Naira takeoff grant. And in that uh, 2019, the, the president or the, uh, the, the executive also released 25 billion, and that, that makes it 35 for last year. And this year, too, uh, they, uh, they have uh, the exact amount is what I don't know. But uh, information coming from them, the Northeast Development Commission said that they have so far relieved, uh, received over uh, around 17 billion or more uh, from, uh, from the VAT collections and the releases, so they say. But if you put that total, uh, it means they must have received more than 50 billion. But unfortunately, uh, there, is, there isn't something, they, 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 what we see on ground is not uh, commensurate with the, the amount. And because of in the, the dear need of our, of our people and the humanitarian crisis, uh, some people feel that uh, uh, the, what, is about to, uh, what is happening in NDDC is about to happen in the Northeast Development Commission. Say they, 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 they wrote a petition. And uh, the House of Representatives responded to it. I think they are investigating the matter. Uh, I, I want to leave it like that, but I think it's, it's good to keep track. The, the, that is the reason. The uh, reason all right, thank you very much. Uh, uh, distinguished Senator Mohammed Ali Undume. Uh, it's an expose that uh, you've uh, revealed on the Arise interview. You're forever uh, an interviewer's uh, delight. Thanks, distinguished Senator Mohamed Ali Undume, former Senate leader and now the Chairman Senate Committee on the Army, for speaking to us on the Arise interview. Well, that's it for this edition of the program. To join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja, goodbye and thanks for watching.